You can be anything that you want to be, especially on Facebook. You can be any corporation that you want to be. This is Black Friday a few years ago. It was always crazy. People used to rush the stores. And they kept moving Black Friday up to Thanksgiving. In some stores, they decided to stay closed on Thanksgiving so their employees could have the day off. Like TJ Maxx. And I was on their Facebook page and I saw people writing messages to them like this person, Trey, who said, Boo, you should be open tomorrow. It's just another day. So I made a Facebook page that looks just like TJ Maxx and responded and said, We'll be open for Thanksgiving, but only if your house is too. He's like, I'm reporting who made this rude TJ Maxx comment to me. We would read the report, but unfortunately we are still closed. And that made Trey angry. Now this is the same Thanksgiving, this is the Macy's Day Parade now. And this is the same Trey that we saw writing to TJ Maxx, now writing to Macy's, saying being G dot dot is unnatural and not okay. It's okay to be gay, and it's okay to be Trey. Love yourself. It'll all be okay. Trey, we're still closed. He's like, Macy's and TJ Maxx are related? We're gay lovers. This is a brand of pimento cheese that Costco is carrying until the owner of the pimento cheese said hateful things about Black Lives Matter. So then Costco stopped carrying the cheese. And this is somebody writing to Costco saying that they're going to boycott them now because they did this. So I made my own Costco wholesale Facebook page and said, we're sorry to hear you're boycotting us. We hope you have a better experience with Kraft, Philadelphia, Cabot, and the many other cheeses. And they wrote back and said they've been a loyal customer of Costco for over 20 years. And then Cabot's cheese commented and said, we don't want your business. Please make your own cheese. Oh my, it looks like you're down to just Kraft and Philadelphia. And Kraft's like, we'll pass. And Philadelphia is like, yeah, I think we're all set. The NBA players boycotted a game to protest racial injustice. And Fox 2 Detroit shared an article about this on Facebook. And somebody in the comments section in all caps wrote, who cares? So I responded as the Detroit Police Department and said, we care. And now you have a warrant out. Good luck. He's like, I have a warrant? For what? Just because I said, who cares? I'll email Chief Craig and see what he says. And Chief Craig's like, you're going to jail, Paul. IHOP temporarily changed their name to IHOB, and they told everyone it was going to be a permanent change, and they ran a contest for people to guess what the B stood for. And everybody just assumed that the B stood for breakfast. And then IHOP came out and said, no, it's actually burgers. And people lost their minds over this. Dwayne's like, fire your staff immediately. This name change is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And Waffle House is like, we think it's the right decision. If you need a cigarette, talk to your server. Y'all want some fucking waffles or what? Everybody was shitting on IHOP about this. This is the actual Wendy's saying, can't wait to try a burger from the place that decided pancakes were too hard. I felt like IHOP needed somebody to stand up for them. So I made my own IHOP Facebook page and said, if you have a problem with us changing our name, then the B is for balls and you can suck ours. And as you can see, this is a very successful post, perhaps one of the greatest in IHOP social media history. People were writing to IHOP. This person, Connie, said, I heard Denny's management and staff celebrating all day, and now they're out of meth. Celebration over. She's like, what are you, 16 years old? That's the least professional or managerial answer possible from someone supposedly representing IHOP. Our family will never dine at IHOP again. That's because your family would be dining at IHOB. Target changed their bathroom dressing policy so that transgender people could use the restroom that corresponded with their gender identity. And it was a big issue. A lot of people wrote to Target about this, like this person Lane, who said, Target has been my favorite store ever, but now I will not go into any Target store until they change the bathroom dressing policy back to the common sense one. I do not hate anyone, but this new policy is dangerous because it'll allow pedophiles to enter these areas. Target, please just make a bathroom for the transgender people along with one for men and one for women. That way we're showing love to all people. Thank you. And the pedophiles are like, we're gonna enter these areas regardless of what the bathroom policy is. You can be any person that you wanna be. This is mega church pastor Joel Olstein. He's one of the richest pastors in the world. He has a huge house. He preaches in front of a giant globe. And people write to him on Facebook. He has one of the biggest followings on Facebook. Like this person who said, I'm requesting prayer for my marriage. 
So I made my own Joel Steen Ministries Facebook page and responded and said, unfortunately, your Joel Steen prayer request account has not been activated. In order to activate your account, you'll need to add a monthly donation of $24.99. That gives you access to three prayer requests per month. And somebody screenshotted this response and it got passed around the internet so much that the actual Joel Olstein had to put the fake stamp on it just to clarify that he does not charge for prayer requests. His church put the fake stamp on it. Snopes even picked it up. False. So I had to make my own Snopes page. True. You can be any witness, plaintiff, and defendant that you want to be. My friends and I used to sue each other so we could get on court TV. The court show pays whoever wins, and it doesn't go on anybody's record. So I was a witness on Judge Alex. Man, I'm just glad we got this money. I needed the money so bad I'm broke. I have like three frozen hamburgers at home. <laughs> I can't afford to buy toothpaste. A plaintiff on Judge Joe Brown. Promoter Ben Palmer is suing a performer for breach of contract. And a defendant on Judge Alex again. I, I, I don't know. I just you, do you know you know how you know how procreation works, right? No. You know that there's like a million sperm that go swimming towards that one egg, competing to see which one can fertilize that egg. Yeah. I am I made amazed it. that yours won. Yeah. You can be any city that you want to be. I used to live in Atlanta. When I was there, I racked up a lot of parking tickets. And I went to court and I had to pay all my tickets. And that same day, I went home and made a Facebook page called City of Atlanta and started making announcements like, we've removed the speed limit signs because no one was really paying attention to them. If you aren't sure how fast to go, just feel it out. And we're shutting down a bunch of roads today, but we can't tell you which ones until your day is ruined. And fuck it, just pee wherever you want. And people were sharing this so much that it made the news in Atlanta. And the actual city of Atlanta gave a statement to the news saying I wasn't authorized to use the city seal and that they're working with Facebook to remove the page. So the news asked me if I had a response to the actual city and I said yes. I said I will remove the logo from the page and discontinue posting as city of Atlanta in exchange for the following. All of my parking and traffic tickets are absolved. $60 cash and two free rides on the trolley. The city never got back to me about that, so I kept posting as the city of Atlanta. The following year it was supposed to snow again in Atlanta, and the last time it snowed in Atlanta it caused a huge pileup on the highway. State of emergency declared. We are expecting up to one inch of snow on Friday. Please stay at home and mark yourself safe on Facebook. This is a warning. And the actual city had to put the fake stamp on it. Warning, it is dangerously cold outside. Please stay inside. Your weak Atlanta blood is not strong enough to withstand the below 30 temperatures. And somebody commented on that post and said, in all seriousness, homeless people downtown need some help getting out of the cold. And he listed ways you could help. And then somebody else responded and said, that's a great idea. Put it out there on the real city page and maybe there'll be some great help. He's like, no one reads the real city page. Just outside of Atlanta is Stone Mountain Confederate Monument, one of the biggest Confederate monuments in the United States. And it's right in the middle of a public park that millions of people visit every year. Atlanta had the Georgia Dome that they imploded to make room for another stadium. And so I thought it would be a good idea if the city of Atlanta hosted an event called Stone Mountain Implosion. And this got shared so much that the city of Atlanta Facebook page was actually deleted by Facebook. So I had to make a new city of Atlanta page. The Super Bowl was in Atlanta one year, and it was strange because Pepsi was advertising all over Atlanta, and Atlanta is the home of Coca-Cola. So I said, we're working with officials to remove these signs. Pepsi has no place in Atlanta. And somebody wrote the page and said, ever heard of the First Amendment or maybe even capitalism Atlanta? You may believe Coke is better, but Pepsi has every right to advertise in your arrogant city. We did not negotiate with terrorists. After living in Atlanta for a while, I moved to Los Angeles. I had a City of Los Angeles Facebook page during the pandemic. And right in the beginning of the pandemic, all the roads emptied out because people were staying at home. And then people started speeding down the empty roads. So I said, we understand you're enjoying the empty roads, but we need you to slow the fuck down. And people thought it was from the actual City of Los Angeles. Somebody's getting fired. Probably not. Does the City Handbook allow for city employees to use profanity? Hell yeah. And after living in Los Angeles, I moved to Colorado, where I formed my own fake newspaper, The Colorado and Times. I made a fake headline that says Walmart to close its doors on Black Friday. And then I emailed it to Walmart and signed my name as a reporter for The Colorado and Times. And they emailed me back and said that they wanted to speak on the phone about this. 
And so this is me and the director of the press office at Walmart. So, so Walmart will be open on Black Friday. That's exactly, as I, sent you, as I sent you our operating hours. What are the chances that Walmart does close on Black Friday? We will not be closed on Black Friday. So like zero, no chance. I'll, we're going to leave it at this. Walmart has every intention of all 5,000 mid stores being open on Black Friday. Could you ask I mean, the CEO, was it Doug? Could you ask Doug? Because there's people asking. No, I'm not. No, we're not going to ask Doug. You can't ask Doug. I, I've, no. You could just say, the, can we close? Is it cool if we close on Black Friday this year? Just this year to start. I'm sorry. Is this a prank call? No. Okay. No, we're not going to be closed on Black Friday. And the persistence of the question after I've explained to you where the article came from is a little is, is a little unusual. And you want me to go to Doug and ask if we're going to close the store on Black Friday? Well, just because some people have been asking. I think it would be good just because Black Friday is a little stressful for employees. We are not taking that question to Doug McMillan, I'm sorry. Barring something completely unforeseen or un- just completely outrageous, all 5,000 of our stores are going to be open on Black Friday. Wouldn't, like a, mob of, with wouldn't a mob operate- of people be outrageous just to, when a whole bunch of people have just run through the doors? Wouldn't that be considered outrageous? I'm really surprised by this line of questioning. We take every precaution to make sure our associates and customers are safe throughout the entire experience. Okay. Does that include mental health or just physical not being trampled kind of thing? I'm I'm, I'm going to have to ask again. Is this a prank call? Absolutely. Absolutely not. There's a company called Monet, who is a multi-level marketing company that sells hair and skin products. And in addition to being a pyramid scheme company that wastes a lot of people's time and energy, they were also selling hair products that were making people lose their hair. So I made a meme of their CEO and I photoshopped him bald. And I made him say, if you like the Vin Diesel look, you should try our hair products because they'll make you bald. And I emailed that to Monet and signed my name as Jackie Jones with the Colorado and Times. And they wrote back and said that this is absolutely unequivocally not from their CEO. So I wrote back and said, okay, we'll make note that he didn't say anything about Vin Diesel. However, we do have a quote from Vin Diesel about him. I can share it with you before we run our story. They're like, yes, we absolutely want to see that story and quote before you run it. Okay, this is directly from Vin's reps. I've relied on Monet to keep me bald for years. After I sent that email, the next email I got was from their lawyers who sent me a multi-page document that mentioned Vin Diesel multiple times. And they said, you can tell it's not their CEO by a simple Google search. And they said, if Jackie Jones and the Colorado and Times publishes this, they'll take swift legal action. And they gave me a deadline to confirm that I won't publish it. And they said, if you have any questions or wish to address this issue further, please contact us or have your attorney do so. So I had my attorney do so. I said on January 28th, 2021, you threatened to take swift legal action. I'm reaching out to inform that if you take any legal action against Jackie or the Colorado and Times, even just a tiny hair of legal action, I will respond by photoshopping every Monad executive bald. And these photos will be posted on the internet and made easily accessible by a simple Google search. In addition, I'll get in touch with every bald celebrity to see if they'd be interested in promoting Monat. And that list includes, but is not limited to, Pitbull, Charles Barkley, Samuel L. Jackson, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Larry David Seal, Terry Crews, and the Dalai Lama. You have until Friday, January 29th, 2021 at 8.59 a.m. Mountain Standard Time to read this email. That time has already passed. If you have any questions or wish to address this issue further, please, do not hesitate to contact a Jones. Sincerely, Jackie Jones. Jones, Jones, and Jones, LLC, Attorneys at Law. You mess with Jones, you get the Jones. I shared these email interactions online and somebody saw it and sent me a link to a Zoom party that all the executives at Monat were having, all the people at the top of the pyramid And so I joined as Trey Angle, and it got a little awkward in there. And I see one face I don't recognize. Who is Mr. Angle? Hey, I'm I'm Trey. They removed Trey from the meeting, so I had to change my name really quick and try to rejoin, and they let me in. So I was able to say, You mess with the Jones? You get the Jones. I've pretended to be a lot of different things, but the one thing I've always wanted to be is a professional comedian. 
And the fact that you watched this and enjoyed this today only validated that. I made it. Thank you for watching, and remember that you can be anything.